One day I went to a supermarket to do some little shopping. So when I got to the counter to pay, a woman was in front of me and she was in the company of a young child of like four to five years. Then this child saw something that he wanted, but the mother did not have enough money to buy it. The mother tried to plead with the child that, you know what, I don't have the money, I'll buy you another time. And let me tell you something, the boy caused chaos in the supermarket. The boy fell on the ground and started throwing his hands and his legs and making noise, screaming, and took the attention of everyone. So people gathered to watch the child throwing tantrums. And you know what? The mother had to sacrifice one of the things that she bought to buy whatever the boy needed in order to calm the situation. Now, the thing is this. If you let your child get his or her way through tantrums, then don't think that tantrum will end. As they grow up with tantrum, they only change the style of manifesting it. And in future, they'll become very crafty in getting whatever they want. Why? Because they knew how to play the gimmicks when they were young. So when they grow up, they may not fall on the ground and raise their legs and cause chaos, but they'll be very crafty in getting whatever they want because they learned it in childhood and no one stopped them. Now, there are many adults who throw tantrums in a very diplomatic way. For example, in a marriage, a man knows that he wants to go and harvest outside. And so he wants a legal ground to execute that. So what does he do? He simply magnifies a small mistake and creates a very thick environment where no one is speaking to each other. And so the moment no one is speaking to each other for long, you will not ask someone where it's coming from when it is late where the person is going to. And so they have created a miasma that allows them to perform their enterprise without anyone asking them. Now that is being crafty in a way. You find someone, someone does a mistake that is very blatant and you ask the person about the mistake. What they do is that they study your words and just speak one statement out of the many words you have said and now magnifies that one and fakes anger around that one to distract you from the mistake and victimize you so that they can find a way of controlling you. It happens a lot. For example, someone does a mistake and you're addressing that mistake and in so doing you mention a statement like that was not wise. Then the person picks it that you know, I, do you mean I'm not wise? Are you calling me a fool? Did you just call me a fool? So they distract you from the mistake they did that you are addressing and magnifies that statement and now create something big out of it. And now that becomes the agenda. If they tell it to someone else, it will look like you're the one who caused trouble while you are addressing the mistake that they did. That one is being crafty. There are people who already know they want to walk out of a relationship or they want to do their own things. And so what they do is that they kind of set the person up to mess up and use that mistake as their exit strategy. For example, someone can simply decide that, you know what, conjugal rights X. And they do it for so long so that the person is oppressed. And the moment the person walks out, they now use that to see, you see, you are going out. And they use that to tie the person down, not knowing that they were just trying to be crafty to get their way out. If you're not keen enough in life, crafty people can control you. But now the challenge is that crafty people feel like they're very smart and intelligent. But somehow, it brings them at a corner and they don't escape the consequences of being crafty. Why can't you just be yourself and call white white and black black? Craftiness has a limit 
beyond which it cannot pass and it can embarrass you when you're finally exposed. Thank you.